In the Surmount 1 trial, the main efficacy finding was that uh, terzepatide, 15 milligrams, produced 22.5% weight loss, which is much greater than anything that we've seen in the past with the other anti-obesity medications. It puts the efficacy of terzepatide squarely in the range of bariatric surgery, somewhere between lap band surgery and sleeve gastrectomy. It's, it's very difficult to compare trials because people uh, enrolled are not exactly the same, but the efficacy does appear to be greater than the step one trials. Uh, right now, we're in a period where we're going to see increasing efficacy of, of agents. So step one produced 15 to 17 percent weight loss in conjunction with a dietary intervention. Uh, if we now look at surmount, uh, depending upon the dose, 20 to 22 and a half percent along with a program of diet and exercise. But soon, in, in a few years, we're going to have a combination of semaglutide along with another agent. That I think is going to produce at least the same amount of weight loss as terzepatide. And beyond that, we're going to have other combinations. We're going to have triagonists. Uh, so where terzepatide is a dual agonist combining the effect of GLP-1 and GIP, we're eventually going to have triagonists, which include the efficacy of glucagon. And we would anticipate that that would produce weight loss of greater than 25%. And so we're now in, in what I would call a golden age of anti-obesity medication development, which will bring the treatment of obesity into the mainstream of care. Uh, you know, when you think about it, most of the chronic diseases that we spend our time treating in internal medicine, diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, the list goes on and on, more than 100, are driven by an increase in body weight. And treating obesity makes the most sense. And the problem has been, the problem with that treatment paradigm is that we haven't had uh, effective, safe treatments that produce the type of weight loss that gave the uh, improvement in outcomes now now we do. We have agents between semaglutide and terzepatide agents that are really going to change the treatment paradigm. I think that's a very good question. And I think that it will make surgery, <clears throat> surgery will appear economically feasible given the cost of these medications in certain countries. Um, if we look at the price of semaglutide, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I understand that it's relatively inexpensive in the UK, uh, you know, when, it, when it's accessible. The problem is it's been so popular and there have been supply chain issues, so uh, we haven't seen that much of it. But I, I think it will begin to bring up those kinds of issues. And undoubtedly, there will be people who will choose surgery, and that's, that's fine. Um, you know, again, let's go to the chronic disease uh, analogy. Hypertension has uh, more than 100, more than 100 agents in 10 different therapeutic classes and combinations of two or three of them. You know, that's how hypertension is treated, and it took 30 or 40 years for that paradigm to develop. We're at the very beginning of that era. But there are still operations done in highly specialized centers for the treatment of, of hypertension. And their surgery can be done for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. So I do think that, it, if anything, there may be an increased interest in surgery because one of the conundrums we've had is how do you prove that weight loss will extend life. You know, we haven't been able to do a randomized trial of surgery to show that. And it is my belief that with agents 
like semaglutide and terzepatide, we are finally going to be able to prove the benefit of, of weight loss on both cardiovascular outcomes and all-cause mortality, and that will make all forms of treatment uh, more acceptable and have greater utilization. I think it's entirely possible that it will. I, I certainly believe that it will. And again, going back to hypertension, back in the 50s, they'd wait till someone had a blood pressure of 250 over 150 before they treat. And they were surprised when the heart failure, uh, the concentric hypertrophy didn't get better, uh, or the uh, you know hemorrhages, the uh, uh, central nervous system damage didn't get better as time went on and they started reducing the blood pressure at which uh, patients were treated because the medicines became more tolerable and more effective, they found that with each decrement in, in blood pressure um, threshold for treating, there was improvement. Now there's prehypertension, 130 over 85, <clears throat> and you can see incremental benefit. So that's the type of process that we may see when it comes to this. Maybe some patients will be taking mini doses of terzepatide. I mean, think about it. If we treated everyone, and I'm not saying that this is the paradigm that we should embrace, but let's say everyone with a BMI of 25 were treated with a small dose of medicine and they never got to a BMI of 27 or 30 or the, the types of BMIs where we know that there's a dramatic increase in risk I mean, maybe that is the right model to use because we know that the physiology of body weight regulation is increasingly damaged in the process of weight gain, that the circuitry that controls body weight gets damaged as people gain weight, and that makes it increasingly difficult to control. So it very well may be that the right model follows that of, of hypertension where we're treating people once they reach a much lower threshold than today. Yes, it, it really is. It's taken a long time to figure this out. I've been involved in the field since 1986 and um, you know it has been a long road with a lot of dead ends. Uh, trying to understand what what was happening and, and why is it so hard for people to lose weight you tell them to lose weight they know they should why don't they just eat less and exercise more and <clears throat> it's really been the understanding that there are counter regulatory systems that fight back and that the weight set point increases over time because of damage to hypothalamic and other neural pathways that has led us to uh, develop the kinds of treatments like terzepatide that we're seeing are, are so effective and I think are going to dramatically improve the health of people around the world.